Tales of the Grim from Nothing. Elliot, this isn't a request. You're a mess. You can barely stand. Look, get yourself up. You're coming to the station, like it or not. Elliot's head swam, memory and the present seeming to mesh together in a confusing swirl of sensation. He could feel the heat around him, the feel of hands grabbing him, pulling him up to his feet, and the rush of cold air. Who took him? Where? I ain't got time to be standing around filling out forms! We're still looking into it. Come on, there's coffee at the station. You smell like you could use it. He felt himself being shoved into the vehicle, and protested only feebly. His limbs felt shockingly weak, and ached with almost burning numbness. Hang in there. What have you been doing? What the hell you been doing? Leave him be, Burdock. He's had a rough enough night. Past and present merged around him, and Elliot pressed a hand to his temple, trying to soothe away the thudding pain in his skull. He remembered this, certain he recalled it from a few nights prior. But as the car throttled into life, he struggled to be sure. A rough night, this I can see. You high or something? Not yet. The memory lingered, and Elliot grimaced at the echo of the pain. His head still throbbed bitterly, and he could not distinguish if it were memory or the cold, stark present that was pulsing inside his head. He glanced down to his arms and hands, fresh bruises and cuts so like the ones of that night before, just like the cold evening when Haynes and Burdock had picked him up. That night, he had started his search for Mike, He could hear it in the back of his mind, the deep growl that seemed to close in faster and faster. Detectives Haynes and Burdock coming in with a Mr. Thomas. Sign in, please. Miss Mendoza is waiting for you in your office, by the way. Thanks, we'll be right in. Someone's in trouble. Oi, Thomas, how do I I look? Uh, Respectable enough to meet his better half? Leave it, Burdock. Come on, Haynes, Fran and I. We have chemistry. You can't deny it. Keep it together, man. We're almost there. You look bloody awful. Worst I did. He ignored them. Whoever it was who seemed to be talking. Everything felt a blur. And the only thing he could focus on was the feeling that he had to find and protect them. Flashes of Michael, of the Gates, of Trish, of Alice. They flashed past his thoughts. And with every face, the urge to protect them grew stronger. Impatience twisted in his gut, and he remembered the same feeling that night when he had started his chase. What the fuck, Ains? Mike needs help. I'm not just pissing around waiting for you here. You sort your shell. I've worked to do. Think you have me confused with someone else, mate? Hang on. We're nearly out of danger. Elliot grit his teeth. The flash of pain bringing him from his memories to blink at the passing streetlights from the car seat he found himself in. He turned, seeing the figure at the wheel before him, some young kid looking at him as though he were mad. The flash of annoyance became suddenly a burning spike of pain, and Elliot doubled over as his gut tightened and he bit down the scream building in his chest. You okay, mate? What? Everything all right? You look awful. Elliot remembered the officer, a concerned fool in the police station standing in his way as he had staggered towards the exit. He remembered the concern to his voice, but most of all, he remembered the pulsing lines of crimson through his shallow flesh, the drone of his blood pulsing. Even as past and present blended, he looked towards the young man in the driver's seat and saw the same ghoulish visage looking at him. Get off me! What the hell's wrong with you? He winced, pressing his hand to his head to try and dispel the memory to try and forget his flight from the station, the sights of the hunks of walking meat and pulsing red iron that walked around him as he had fled through the city streets. The nightmare seemed unending, and it took a moment for the memory to pass. Even as his mind became his own again, he looked back out from the seat of the moving car, watching the men and women on the streets and fearing the vision would return. Where, where's, where's Michael? Your friend in the warehouse? Please have him. He'll survive. He frowned, at last noticing the red-white costume the man beside him was wearing. And you? 
I'm like you. Just another freak on the streets trying to do some good. Elliot curled his lip at the sentiments, rubbing at his head again. He had suffered blackouts and hallucinations before, but he knew there was not a drop of alcohol, nor an ounce of drugs in his system. <clears throat> what? What's happening to me? Memory flooded him again as a wash of lightheadedness left him flopping back into the seat. Feebly, he looked outside as they passed through a red light district. The workers on the streets as they passed, melding into the memory of the previous few nights. Thistle Lane, that was where he had fled to, driven by a twisted sense of belonging to that porch to hell. No one living wanted to be in Thistle Lane, and the memory of it immediately recalled the stink of the perfume and poor quality weed, and worse, that sat over the infamous street like smog. The noise of moans, calls, and laughter echoed in his thoughts, and he recalled shambling through the road, ignoring the honeyed words of barely-dressed women as he had made his way to the crumbling housing project he had once called home. It was as though he could see it again. The rusted sign saying, Welcome to all lost souls, that sat over its battered entrance. Among the girls at the door, he had seen her, an auburn-haired beauty by the name of Trish, and the pitying smile she had given him as he approached. Elliot? Elliot, you bugger, it's been months! Where have you been? Around. Surviving. You look like shit. <laughs> nothing changes. Don't lie to me, Elliot. I know damn well what you've been doing. You said you were keeping out the pits, remember? After all those times we told you it wasn't worth it, you try getting yourself killed anyway. Well, I did what I needed to. I bet you did. Come on. Let's get inside and get you cleaned up. He recalled the inside of the place he'd once called home. A lifetime ago, it had seemed. It had been just as before. Alcohol-stained carpets and cigarette-stained walls. The stink of desperation. Sweat and shame clung to the air within, and he remembered the perverted snickers of the men he passed as he staggered slowly after Trish through the familiar halls and tattered corridors. As she had led him into a room, he braced himself, ready for the tirade that started before the door had even closed. What the hell, Elliot? You disappear for months and then waltz back here bold as brass. What the hell do you think this is, a bed and fucking breakfast? Mike's been taken. I don't know who exactly by, but... I know the Gregories were after him. I, I need more info. Jesus, what happened? Nothing. Uh, it's, it's what I did. There were fights I, meant to, I was meant to lose, you know. I didn't. Then, things got out of hand. Sounds right for you. Always you and your fucking pride. <sighs> I doubt he's got much time. Any ideas where he could be, or, or anyone who might know something? <sighs> Poor Mark. Wait here. Get yourself cleaned up. I can give you a day, but after that you'll have to make yourself scarce. I've got work to do. In the meantime, I'll ask around. She shook her head sadly. He never knew exactly what it was that had existed between them, but he knew they'd grown up in the gates together. They'd only stopped talking after he'd started dating her best friend. Hey, hey stay with me, mate. You phased out a bit there. Oh. Oh, where, where are we going? Somewhere safe. Police and the Gregories will be over that warehouse by now. We need to be scarce. What, why are you taking me? You kidding? With what you did back there? Seems you and I are more in common than I thought. I was worried I was the only one. Relax. You look like you need a decent rest. You look like you need a decent rest. Trish? I missed you, Elliot. The growl in the fog relented, and Elliot allowed himself a chance to lie back against the bed and rest. Sleep took him quickly, and by morning she was already gone, leaving only a note with a name and an address. Bakara. He made his way back out of the brothel, pissing away the last of his notes at a nearby off-license. But the whiskey had done nothing to dull a lingering, growling voice in the back of his mind. Picking himself up, he'd forged on making his way to the halal butchers that awaited at the far side of the district. Hello, my friends. How can I help you today? You, Bikara. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, I hope so. Else I'm in the wrong shop. 
Perhaps some steaks for you, my friend. Some good steaks, perhaps. The lamb, it is especially good today. I need information on the Gregories. You are mistaken, my friend. This is a butcher's, not a broker's. Elliot found it hard not to tense as he noted the way the man's fingers wrapped against the handle of the cleaver, waiting at the counter. They took a friend of mine and I need to find him. Quickly. I am sure you do. Oh, you are persistent, Mr. Thomas. I will give you that. <laughs> oh, relax yourself. I've seen you fight is all. Lock the door there and wait a moment. I will get cleaned up and then we'll have a talk about your friend. It took a moment for Elliot to relax, but if Bakara was concerned, he showed no indication, trotting off into the back only to return a moment later with a towel to clean his hands. Well, Mr. Thomas, we're in a bad place, aren't you? No one goes looking for the Gregories, much less without look in the eye. Just tell me where I look. Now, let's say I did know where your friend is. Why should I tell you? What is in it for Bakara? I've nothing. Well, that is unfortunate. There's little else to say, my friend. The door is there. If you have seen me fight, you know I'm not the type to just back off, don't you? Ha ha ha! True, true. Then perhaps there's something we can do for you, Mr. Thomas. Sometimes it pays to have a man like the one I see in the pits on side. Here. A man might have heard the Gregories are starting to call in old debts, your friend included. Seems he owes to one of the Beatles, and tonight they're coming to collect. A man might stay at a warehouse in the canal docks. Perhaps one like, uh, Award Logistics? I can't give you anything in return. Not yet. But a man knows when a debt is owed. He frowned recalling the smile on the butcher's face as he had said it. And at once, Elliot now, as then, wondered if he had made the right decision. The breaking of the car snapped him from his thoughts, and at last, the visions of the past dropped from him as he found himself parked in the middle of a disused warehouse. The dim street lighting cast ominous shadows, but it was the rusting hulks of ancient buses that stood out most. Ah, ah. Ah, uh, where, where the hell are we? Nothing to nowhere, my friend. Come on, let's get you patched up. I know when a debt is owed.